Hey guys, welcome to another learning session. And this time I will talk about vapor soap process, which is technically the first process step in semiconductor packaging. This is Lito Galera, and welcome to my Watch, Learn, and Play channel. Vapor soap process has two main steps. First is the mounting of the vapor onto the dicing tape. We call this step as vapor mount process. The vapor mount process is simple and direct. However, it can cause significant problems if not done properly. After mounting, the vapor is ready for dicing process. I will discuss the details of these two processes in the next slides. Let's see the vapor mount process in action by watching this video from Ultron Systems. You can watch the full video using the URL provided on this slide. The model UH114 series wafer frame film mounters are able to consistently and uniformly mount a wafer to a film frame in several easy steps. First, load the film frame and wafer onto the machine. Then, turn on the vacuum switch to hold them into position. Pull the film evenly over the wafer and film frame and attach it to the front tension bar. Next, pull the laminate roller assembly completely forward and return it to its home position. Close the lid and rotate the circular cutter 360 degrees to cut the film along the film frame. Slide the end cutter, open the lid, and remove the excess unmounted film. Finally, turn off the vacuum switch and the process is complete. I highlighted three key parts in the video. First is making sure that the vapor stage or chuck is clean and free of debris before putting on the vapor. You notice that the vapor is facing down when placed onto the chalk. If the chalk surface is dirty or contaminated, that dirt may transfer to the vapor and contaminate some good devices. Worst case, if there's a debris on the chalk, it will make the vapor not sitting flat and that will lead to vapor breakage when the vacuum is turned on or when the tape is rolled onto the vapor. These are small things but can cause serious problems. The second thing that I highlighted is the loading orientation of the vapor. Notice that the vapor has a flat side. This flat side is a guide for proper and consistent vapor orientation when mounting and cutting the vapor. This same orientation will also be used as reference to subsequent process, which is the diatach process. If vapor is mounted and cut with the wrong orientation, it is likely the vapor will be unusable either at the dicing process because of misaligned cut or at the attach due to misoriented dye. Some dicing machines may be able to detect this misorientation, but if your process don't have that advanced equipment, then you're likely to have a major problem. That's why it is better to make sure that vapor is mounted with correct orientation. Lastly, the mounting quality, which is the adhesion of the vapor to tape, must be bubble free. An air bubble between tape and vapor means there's no adhesion between the two materials. Without proper adhesion, the dye will fly off from the tape during the dicing process and this can cause blade breakage and may also damage the vapor. Needless to say, air bubble on tape must be checked carefully after vapor mounting and also before the dicing process. There are two main types of mounting tapes. One is a typical blue tape, and the other is the UV tape. Interestingly, the reasoning for choice of mounting tape is not mainly affected by dicing process, but rather by the diattach process. 
I will discuss this in detail in the data touch process video that I will release soon. But for now, I will just talk about tapes in the next slides. Let's talk about the difference between the typical blue tape and the UV tape. Blue tape can be considered as all-purpose tape. It has a good adhesion suitable for dicing process and also for dietics process for most devices or die sizes except for large thin die. It is also cheaper compared to UV tape. UV tape has a much higher adhesion strength which is very good for dicing process but once exposed to UV light the adhesion strength is almost nil which is ideal for dietic process particularly for large thin die. UV tape is mainly used for high-end ICs in advanced packaging. This slide shows further comparison between blue tape and UV tape. Values shown here are typical and were extracted from a material data sheet. I highlighted in the blue box the very significant difference in values of adhesion to silicon vapor between the blue tape and UV tape. Tape adhesion is critical in the dicing process. Without enough adhesion, part of vapor or dye may come up during dicing process which will cause damage to both the vapor and blade. Tape adhesion also affects the next process step, which is the dye attached process, mainly because of the dye size. The illustrations on this slide explain the different adhesion level between different tapes and different dye sizes. At vapor form, the contact area of vapor to the tape is equal to the surface area of the vapor, which is the maximum adhesion possible. However, the adhesion is reduced as the dicing process progress. Once dicing is complete, the adhesion is already reduced to the area of the dye. For small dye on the blue tape, the adhesion is low which is ideal for dye attached process. For a large dye on the blue tape, the adhesion is higher due to larger contact area compared to a small dye. And for the same dye size, the dye mounted on UV tape is sticking more than the one mounted on blue tape. Let's now talk about the actual dicing process. And let's start by watching this short video. As usual, you can watch the original full video using the URL provided on this slide. That short video showed the three main steps of dicing process. First is the vapor alignment, followed by dicing process. And finally, quality check. I will discuss these key steps in the next slides. Why vapor alignment is critical? Every vapor is mounted differently in terms of angular position. A vapor may be rotated a bit more to the right or a bit more to the left or just try to look straight. So why vapor alignment is important? For illustration purposes, let's capture a small portion of the vapor and assume it is perfectly straight or aligned. The soil street is a space between two dies. To achieve a good cut, the blade cutting line must be in the middle of the soil street. Take note that the blade linear position or alignment is fixed. With this, the vapor, specifically the soil street, must be straight and parallel to the blade. Otherwise, the cut will be misaligned and the cut vapor will be unusable or scrap. There are two ways to align the vapor. One is manual alignment, which is done by aligning the soil streets on the left side and right side of the vapor. On actual machine, the camera will zoom in and focus on the left side of the vapor and the screen will show the crosshair position relative to the soil street. The operator will move or rotate the vapor to line up the soil street to the crosshair, after which the same is done on the right side of the vapor. 
This is done back and forth multiple times until the crosshair is aligned on both sides of the wafer. Manual alignment is usually used when cutting a blank silicone wafer or a wafer with no unique pattern. And in some cases, when cutting a small piece of wafer that is uh, salvaging some pieces from a broken wafer. The other and better method of aligning the wafer is by auto alignment. Auto alignment uses PRS or Pattern Recognition System. PRS is an old vision technology but very powerful and is common capability in many semiconductor equipment, all the new, particularly saw, data touch, and wireband machines. In an auto alignment method, the user will select and teach a unique pattern that the machine will use as a template for wafer alignment. The PRS system is able to detect position and rotation of the thought pattern and translate that to the position and rotation of the wafer. With the PRS information, the wafer rotation, which is the wafer theta alignment, is adjusted automatically until the wafer is aligned or straight. This image shows the parameters in play in the dicing process. Of course, there is the tape and wafer. The blade is mounted on the spindle assembly. Feed rate is a speed of feeding the wafer onto the blade. The DI water is to cool down the blade and also it helps to immediately wash off the silicon dust. Wafer wash is another step after the cutting process. This can be an integrated step built within the saw machine for a full automatic system or a separate machine just for washing purposes. Note that the silicon dust may deposit and contaminate the device band pads if not washed immediately and properly. One of the first things that comes to mind when talking about sewing or dicing process is definitely the blade. Like you can't sew if there's no blade. So it's now time to talk about blades. Blade exposure and thickness are key properties when selecting a blade. Blade thickness affects the curve width, which is critical to dicing quality. And obviously, a thinner blade is needed for narrow saw street. And blade exposure is affected by required cutting depth and wafer thickness. In general, blade exposure, curve width, and cut depth are related to blade thickness and can be calculated or predicted using these formulas. Recommended blade exposure is less than 20 times blade thickness, or maximum 30 times blade thickness. Of course, theoretically, more blade exposure means longer blade life. However, a large blade exposure means blade can be wavy or wobbly during cutting process, which is high risk for blade breakage. Curb width is about 10% wider than blade thickness or cut depth should be less than 10 times blade thickness. If deeper cut is necessary, it should be no more than 15 times blade thickness. The blade for dicing process is a diamond blade, but note that the diamond is not real. Diamond refers to the diamond grits, which are synthetic material. The actual blade is mounted on a hub with a narrow edge exposed around the hub. The key properties of diamond grits are grit size, concentration, and bond type. All these properties affect dicing quality and blade wear. Grit size is about how small or large the grit is. Concentration is the density or the approximate number of grits on the blade. This is either high or low concentration. While bond type is how the grits are held together to form the blade, which can be a soft bond or a hard bond. Here are simple charts showing the relationships of grid properties versus dicing quality or chipping, and also blade wear. The left chart is for grid size, which shows that smaller grid size will likely reduce chipping. However, the blade wear is faster. With larger grid size, blade wear is reduced, but likely there is a tendency to have more chipping. On the middle chart, high concentration tends to reduce the top or front side chipping and also improves blade wear. 
but it somewhat increases the chance of backside chipping. The right chart shows the relationship or bond type. The soft band is good in reducing chipping issue but has the opposite effect in terms of blade wear. A new blade is immediately ready for use to cut a vapor. However, while it is good to use, it is actually not at optimum condition for best cutting quality. The reason is the exposure of diamond grits on a new blade is shallow and may be uneven. Blade dressing is the process of uniformly exposing the diamond grits. This is done using a dressing board or plate, cutting at a very slow speed for a certain number of cuts. Equipment or blade supplier usually have recommended recipe for blade dressing. The user can optimize the recipe for a specific application. Blade dressing also helps on the truing of the blade, which is the correction of blade center line relative to the spindle. In summary, to select a dicing blade, you will need both vapor and tape information. For vapor, you need to know soil street width and your target curb width, and also vapor thickness, passivation material, and soil street material or metallization. For tape, you need to know the tape thickness. Once you have this information, you can then select your blade based on blade thickness, exposure, and grit properties. The image on the right gives you some information about blade nomenclature from Disco Corporation. We have discussed a lot about mounting tape and dicing blade. So it is now time to discuss the remaining parameters of dicing process, which are the spindle rotation speed and cutting feed rate. The spindle rotates at a very high speed, approximately 30,000 RPM to 45,000 RPM. The vapor is fed to the spinning blade at the speed or feed rate of approximately 10 to 80 millimeters per second. Let's look at these simple charts for spindle RPM and saw feed rate and how they affect sawing quality and blade wear. For spindle RPM, a higher RPM tends to reduce chipping and also improves blade wear. However, if the spindle RPM goes too high, the positive effects are reverse. That means chipping may increase and blade wears faster. For feed rate, a slow feed rate tends to reduce chipping and blade wear, which are good. However, because it is slow, productivity or throughput is also low, which is not desirable for high volume manufacturing. We have covered vapor alignment and dicing process. It is now time to discuss quality check after dicing process. Let's look at this image of a portion of a sewn vapor to understand dicing quality. The large dark brown color is the dye active area. The soy street is the area inside the narrow lines from the edge of the dye. The curve is the cut line and measured as curve width. On the top left is the illustration of a good cut. A good quality cut has the curve in the middle of soy street with no chipping that extends to the dye boundary or active area. An example of a bad quality cut, which is a reject, is shown on the bottom left side of this slide. That is an excessive chipping on the dye top side that extended to the boundary of the dye. Another example of bad cut is a misaligned cut, that is the cut line or curve is along the dye boundary or dye active area. Chipping does not only happen on dye top side. It is not uncommon that it also happens on dye back side. Although dye back side has usually no active circuit, it is typically not acceptable to have backside chipping that's more than 25% of dye thickness. To summarize, we have covered in this video the different mounting tapes, which are blue tape and UV tape. We also talk about blade parameters such as grit size, concentration, and bond type, and also blade dressing. 
We also covered the importance of paper alignment and comparison between a manual and auto alignment method. And lastly, we talk about dicing quality, which is about top and back side chipping and cut line accuracy. Coming up next are learning videos of the attachment wirebond processes. Thank you for watching.